Okay, five minutes gone, let's go. So first question, natural immunity, the first line of defense against foreign organisms and substances. Which one is that one? The natural immunity, what is that called? Another name for natural immunity? Natural immunity or? Innate. Innate immunity, yes, yes, yes. So number one, the answer is J, innate immunity. Very good. Now skin and mucosal lines of the respiratory and gastrointestinal tract. What would that be referring to? When you think about skin, what kind of barrier is that? A physical barrier. A physical barrier, very good. So number two, the answer would be E. Number three, tears and saliva contain this enzyme that kills bacteria, right? Enzymes end in what three letters? Lysozymes. Lysozyme, yes. Well, you give the full answer, very good. So tears, they contain lysozyme and what they do, as the name implies, right? They destroy or lice or cut things up. Comes from the word lice, meaning to cut. Who cells engulf and destroys the foreign organism, and that would be, so it eats it. Nom, nom, nom. And when we're thinking about the oh, eating mode that? of macrophages, that is a phagocytotic activity. So it's phagocytosis, which is cell eating. And what is cell drinking again? I forgot. Not phago, but another for that pinot. Very good, right? So cell drinking in terms of liquids. Let's go to the next one. White cells in the blood, nucleated cells originate from bone marrow. It's the white cells in the blood and they're nucleated, which originate from bone marrow. Right. In terms of structurally what they are, not ultrophils, but... Neutrophils. Neutrophils, right. So it's neutrophils, right? These are white cells in the blood. Okay, a group of plasma and cell surface proteins that fight against invading organisms. And the way they do it is by making holes. This was probably the last thing we look at. They make holes um, in, the, in the bacteria, causing them to water to rush in. And then, of course, for the cell to swell up and burst. So, what system is that one? Complements. Complement. Very good. Yeah. So, number six is the complement system. Now, the secretory protein produced by lymphocytes in response to antigens. So this is signal. These are proteins, signaling proteins. Right? It's a special group of proteins. So it is signal, signal. Antibodies? Pardon? Not the antibodies, no. Right? The antibodies, what they do, they specifically mark some of them for death, but they don't signal. The signal ones, even though I mentioned it, I probably didn't put enough emphasis on it, would be the cytokines, right? These are secretory proteins, the cytokines. These are the ones that signal and elicit a immune, a immune response. They res now the number eight, respond to the antigen. I think there's the one you wanted to answer, a jump here, right? So that one indeed would be the antibody, the, the response to antigen. So antibody, antigen, it goes like a hand in glove. Whenever you think of hear the word antibody, first thing that should come to mind is an antigen. So the antibody binds the antigen. And how does it do it? Yeah, just confirmation, like a hand in glove, just like how a glove fits on a hand. Antibody, it fits on, the hand will be like the antigen, the antibody will be the glove. It fits right over it. That is very important to take note of. That's how he's able to identify it, identify specific ones, so it fits. It fits right over it. And now, of course, once it fits, now it targets it for, let's say, natural killer cells to come in to do their job. All right. So, um, respond antibodies. Second line of defense, develop memory. Well, since we already did innate immunity, this one would be, the second line is the adaptive. Adaptive immunity. Yeah. And remember the adapt. So it has to adapt, so therefore it will take long. It come like, you know, if it is you're going by your, your family and them, you know, you have to adapt to their ways. It takes a little while before you get used to them. If you now get married or now in a relationship, you know, it takes a little while before you feel comfortable. So similarly, the adaptive immunity takes a little while, right, to actually kick in. And the last one, foreign microbial and non-microbial substances by means of 
So it's not the antibody, but the antigen. So the antigen is a unique, that is like the number plate, right? It uniquely identifies a microorganism. It's proteins that uniquely identifies it. And of course, the antibody, that's how the antibody is able to actually track it down. It looks for the particular number plate. Ah, we see it, boom, and it locks onto it. So that one would be A. Let's go to the MCQs, all right? Well, let's see what's going on. Number, let's look at number one. A something is a disease-causing organism. Which one is that? What causes yeah. a disease? Huh? So a pathogen. A pathogen, very good, pathogen. That's the one that causes the disease. What molecule stimulates an immune response? So an antigen. Yes, not the uncle gen, right? But the antigen. Antigen stimulates the immune response. Very good. Number three, which blood cells produce antibodies? Antibodies, so you know it might be in a little bit of a toss-up. Is it a B cell or a T cell? Well, think about well, it. Antibodies, antibody has a B in the middle of it. So therefore, which mm -hmm. ones? Um, which blood cells specialize as cis B cells and the answer, sorry. Um, sorry, with molecules that stimulate a response would be the antigen, yeah. So the antigens, they stimulate the immune response. Next one, number three, white blood cells specialize as cis B cells. T-cells. Right, the T-cells, thank you very much. The T-cells, and they're so-called T-cells because they mature in which organ? So the B-cells mature in the bone marrow and the T-cells mature in the thymus. Yeah, the thymus. So that's why they call them T-cells. They're shorthand for thymus. Let's look at number four. Non-living particle containing protein and DNA that can infect a living cell. So virus. Oh, yes. From the time you hear non-living, all of these are bacteria. Micro yeah, just think about virus. You know, that, that is something that as you go forward, you'll appreciate more. From the time you hear non-living, first thing should jump in your mind, virus. Virus. So viruses, actually, they're not alive. So which is why they have to invade cells. And they literally, they hijack the machinery of the cell so that replication could occur. Other than that, if you leave a virus there, psh, it will just stay there. It wouldn't replicate. It may but it will just stay. It can't do anything. It has to use the machinery of a cell from another organism to actually do its work. And that's how they work. Let's go. Which of the following is an example of the first line of defense? So a neutrophil. So what we're looking, which of the following is an example of, of the first line of defense? Hmm. First line. So that would be something related, let's say, to the skin. Microbiome. Yeah, so it wouldn't be a neutrophil, right? Neutrophil that is within the body itself. It'll be the normal microbiota. Oh. No, it would be the normal microbiota. No, so that is, the, that is the micro, as we might be well aware, on your skin. If you were to, if you were to take a, a, a microscope and have a look, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You have a whole forest or a jungle, a whole population of things living on your skin. And they live harmoniously with you. When things go out of whack, that's right, when they start to get rashes and so on. But they actually contribute to keeping you healthy as well. We have microbiota on our skin. We also have it in our gut. And one would argue there's a new movement in medicine and uh, that nutrition, which points to the fact that, that those microorganisms in your gut, they are the ones that actually control your health, right? Everything about you related to your health, they teach the immune system what to do. Now, I wouldn't get into too much detail about it, but suffice it to say, it probably goes back to that old adage, you are what you eat. All that being said, when, what is in your gut, it could control the entire body, every facet of your body itself. Let's go. Which of the following is an example of the second line of defense? We mentioned the biota, normal bio, microbiota, which is the helpful bacteria present on your skin. Which are the following example of the second line of defense? Somebody mentioned it before, inflammation. Right, that's the second line. And the last one, the third line of defense would be antibodies. Antibodies. Right. 
Okay, so the normal microbiota, that'll be the first line. The second line would be the inflammation and the third line would be the antibodies. Very good. Let's go on to the next set. All right, so we have, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a so we have 10 questions here. Let me give you a seven minutes. Let me set my, um, my timer, all right? So seven minutes and then we'll go through them. Okay, let's go. Um, I was never really good at math in terms of counting. Which of the following does not protect the body surfaces? Hmm. So the salivary analyst. What is it? Yes, that is correct. Right, the skin, gastric acid, your gut microflora, they all, because you have, it protects the internal body surface, but salivary amylase does not. It protects the internal one in terms of your mouth is released in the uh, mouth and begin, begins digestion there, All right? So the skin protects the body surface, gastric acid, the stomach lining, gut microflora, we're talking there, but the salivary amylase. Though. Why did you say salivary amylase, by the way? Anybody want to give a reason? I don't know, I like to know because. Huh. Yeah, why is this like real malaise? Interestingly. Yeah. Anyone? Because amylase is used to break down sugars. Salivary amylase is break down sugars. Right. Well, what is secreted by the salivary glands? Is that secreted by the salivary glands in your mouth? Yeah, but it has to do with digestion, all of those, right? So whereas the skin is a physical barrier, the gastric acid, remember, if you, let's say, swallow something that's not too wholesome, like if you leave, for instance, food on the counter for a day when you come in the night, you smell it, you're not too sure, but you still eat it, and it is, it is teeming with microorganism, bacteria and otherwise, once it reaches into your stomach, right, the acidic environment of the stomach protects it. Passing your stomach, if it gets into your gut, you have microflora, you also have bacteria in your gut. That is also, they also serve a protective function. But salivary amylase, what it does, it does break down sugars, right? It's an enzyme and it doesn't really, it's not something that is specific to protection, but it's something that specifically breaks down sugars. So that's why that one is the odd man out. Whereas the skin, yes, is a protective barrier. Gastric acid, yes, in your stomach, it breaks down, protects the surface of the stomach and by extension, your whole internal environment and the gut microflora, they are in and of themselves, they have phagocytic and other lytic actions associated with them that protects the body surfaces. Let's look at the next one. Initiation of the T cell requires multiple receptors, re ligands. Okay, this one is actually beyond, beyond the scope of this class. The answer is CD4, CD8 molecules, but we are not, um, it's a little beyond the scope of the class. You wouldn't be expected to know that one. Let's look at the next one. Neutrophil defensins, mm, beyond the scope of the class. Uh, acute inflammation, character, character characteristically involves, mm, the answer is influx of neutrophils. Uh, again, beyond the scope of the cast. Okay, we could do five. What do lysosomes do? As I said, lyso. So what does the word lys mean? When you lyse something, L-Y-S-E. Think about something you have in a... Um, so like, so a spray, it releases a chemical uh, right. acid or something. Yeah, so what, 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 is, what does the word L-Y-S-E mean? And you're quite right in terms of relating it to Lysol. They, you know, that is in terms of its action. But what, when you say you lie something, 
what what are you doing l y s e yeah breaking it apart or a cutting lice actually means cutting so you see anything that looks like cutting yeah E, e cried right <laughs> splitting yeah splitting or cutting the peptidoglycan peptidoglycans are the sugars of the bacterial cell walls what would happen if you cut these sugars in a cell wall what do you think what do you think will happen think about if you have a wall what would happen if you pull out the mortar what will happen to the wall it will fall down the wreck is right. would have yeah. Sold it. yeah yeah and by so extension it will kill it yeah so that's how lysozymes work and that's how lysol they do they use that name lice because it could be what the ingredients in there it actually destroys the cell wall of the the usually bacteria is mainly um even though they do claim viruses as well it probably does that also and it does that and once they do that it will um it will be destroyed but uh, quiet as is kept you know um you know even though they they speak about that yes it lices and it sounds so fascinating right wow you know this is probably really good stuff you know so you know soap does the same thing a detergent yeah which is why you use detergents to wash your wares. Not only does it um, break up the fat molecules into globules, removing the, um, getting it off of your plate. That is one of the functions, but more importantly, what it does, detergents, it destroys or it reduces the surface tension associated with the membrane, causing it to burst. All right, so that's one of the important things. So, which is why soap is a very good cleaner detergent. So, if it is, you know, on any given day, let's say um, you don't have any Lysol or what have you not, using a detergent, any type of detergent, you know, be it the powder detergent, um, dishwashing liquid, anything that has a soap in it, or if you take soap, cut it up, uh, you know, and mix it in, in water, you can mop with that and it will, it is very uh, effective in terms of Killing both bacteria and viruses, simple as it might sound. Yeah. In the so in the lab, for instance, when we want to do extraction of DNA, we use this detergent called Triton X. And it's just basically just like the components very similar to the ones found in your palm olive, in your squeezy, you know, any different ones uh, that you find in your home as well. Let's go forward. Natural killer cells do not contain beyond the scope of the class. The answer is false, right? But that is beyond the scope of the class, number seven. Which of the following is a primary or oh, time up? <laughs> okay, my timer going off. Slide, okay. Which of the following is a primary lymphoid organ? The thymus. The thymus, very good, yeah, the thymus. Right. What area of your body would you find your thymus? Yeah. And you buy your throat, quite right. Yeah. Good. Let's look at another question. Um, which of the following functions are macrophages unable to carry out? So they do phagocytosis, they show that's a major thing they do. They do antigen processing and processing. So the one thing they can't do is the T-cell priming that occurs in the thymus itself. So the T-cell priming, that's the odd man out. All right, and the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Which one? Hmm, let me see if we could get this one. What do they do? Lymphocytes. Which one do you think is the answer? Tracy. Yes, what are you saying? Yeah, recirculate between blood and the lymphoid tissue. That's what they do. Yeah. All right. So they, the repository, they stay usually in the lymphoid tissue. But if they do get the signals sent out by the cytokines, they will move into the general circulation. And again, cervical, um, cervical vein, they do enter. And that's how they get into the general circulation and they'll move to the area. Cytokines um, are released and they have a chemotoxic response. So it, 
So in terms of the release, they leave like a chemical signal. It's like they're walking and um, they're spraying. I don't know if you anybody remember this story. It might be beyond a lot of your Hansel and Gretel. Anybody remember that story? Yes, no? Yes, sir, I know that story. Yeah, mm -hmm. some people might know it, yes, at all. Because books they replaced, you know, by video games. But you know any story how yeah, things was tight and the father was like, you know what? I go and give all it to the animals and them have a eat here, yes. But you know, he dropped stones along the way and thus was able to find his way back. Cytokines do the same thing. So it's a process called chemo, uh, it's chemo attractants. So not only are they released, but they give off a chemical, right? And when the lymphocyte recognizes chemical, they're able to follow the trail. And that's how they're able to know where to actually find these um, different uh, bacteria or viruses. Very interesting. Okay, let's do one more set and then we'll call it a day. Everybody excited? <sighs> okay, I can could, I could feel the excitement. Let's have a look at some images. Okay. Let's see what they look like. All right, so which one is adaptive immune system manufactured in the body? Proteins that label pathogens as foreign substances and they have a Y shape. What is it? Yeah, antibody. What you saying? It don't make excellent, excellent. Antibody is very good. Let's look at the next one. Toxins that immune, induce an immune response. So in other words, these are the unique protein uh, signals that bind to antibodies. What are they called? So the antigen. Well, it is antigens, but what is, that is true. Um, Toxin or foreign substances induce an immune response in the body. So this is referring to, now you're correct in saying that, and if you did give it, you would get it right. But these are ones okay. which actually cause disease, sort of extended it. So specific proteins that cause disease, what are they called? So disease causing agents are known okay. as, it begins with P and it rhymes with mathogen. So pathogen. Yes, thank you very much. Pathogens, right? So pathogens, very importantly, they induce an immune response in the body. But so what about the R8 factor? That will, um, that will, that will stimulate an um, immune response? An immune response? response, it surely does, right? You'd speak more to that when we're looking at um, in microbiology for nursing. I don't want to steal the thunder. But yes, those are, they also reduce uh, or induce a response. Let's have a look at this one. Derived from the bone marrow, they're responsible for producing antibodies. So which type of cell produce antibodies? So the B cells. Right, you remember the B, antibodies. If you're confused, either B or T cells, you always remember antibodies have a B right in the middle of it. Very good. Let's look at number four. WBC, so a white blood cell able to, ability to locate and eat. Nom, 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 nom. Right, so it has phagocytotic activity and it is very big. So what kind of phage is it? A macrophage. A macrophage, right? So these are macrophages, right? They're very big and they engulf. So after it engulfs it, now the lysozymes would actually fuse, release the contents and then they digest it. Um, we go past this one. Um, let's look at six. A white blood cell that works with macrophages to fight viruses, right? Uh, uh, so it's not the B cells. So what type it is then? What other type of cell it is? Not B. So it's two for the T cells, right? The T cells are the one that actually um, mature in the thymus. All right. And this is the last one, Cell Alive Virtual Lab. Um, this is interesting. I might incorporate this one into our lab when we do it. Not, not, not today's lab, because today's lab, we're looking um, at, the, at something totally different. The labs don't run parallel to the lecture. All right, but there's something I could have a look at 
is very interesting. And just click on the website when you do have the time to do so. But not with the, let's go on to this other one. And let, yeah, so this is the last of the multiple choice. So let's just do this one and we'll call it a day, all right? So what is the term used to describe white blood cells migrating towards bacteria? I mentioned it just now. Hansel and Gretel. So phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is eating, cell eating, quite right. But a toxic is really a taxis, like taxis, is really a movement in response to something. So I'll give you a hint. It's one out of either C or D. Now, photo is light, and chemo refers to a chemical. So which one do you think it is? C, quite right. So it's a chemotoxic response. Uh, so it release chemicals, and now they're able to follow the signal. All right. Um, I didn't speak in detail of this one. Which immune cell is responsible for the quickest release of histamine that causes the red itchy wells associated with allergies? You would have, you might have looked at this when you're looking what at the blood. Histamines. Histamine. So what is that? Quickest release of histamine, right? So what is histamine? Anybody, what's histamine? We know, let me give you a hint. You know, like when you have um, a cold or if you have congestion and you go to the drugstore, you'll get what? Antihistamines. So what do you think they do? If you're having trouble breathing, you might want to take antihistamines. So the chemicals so release, opens up. It would it would fight the can it would fight the allergy. Yeah, correct. It does. So what do you think histamines do? They're associated with if you want to get an antihistamine. If you have if you're congested and you're getting trouble breathing, and you have to take an antihistamine, what does that tell? What do you think histamines do? In terms of let's say the respiratory tract in particular, they're associated with what? Open it back up. Open correct. Back up. So therefore, the histamines cause swelling. That's one of the one of the major things they do. They are associated with inflammation, All right? So that's why you take antihistamines to uh, negate the activity of the histamine, and therefore you don't have swelling because it's a problem. It's a big problem if your respiratory tract, particularly in the area of the bronchi bronchioles, if they start to swell. If it swells, it will close it off, and that's why you get trouble breathing. So similarly, asthmatics as well, they will take antihistamines with some of them. When you look at their nebulizer, they do have antihistamines present there. And what they do is open, open up the, uh, or decrease inflammation. It's quiet as this kept. What is a very good natural <laughs> um, plant that you could take that has very good antihistamine properties? And some people take it as well. If you talk to some um, persons who suffer from asthma, who live- I wanna. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head, yeah. Y'all are aware of this, yes? So, yeah, but, but sir, is I it, am. Is okay. it the marijuana um, leaf itself or is it the roots? Because I heard it's the male root. <laughs> the active ingredient is- Some people use the root. It, um, it's a chemical called tetrahyd THC, tetrahydrocannabinoids. It's a class of drugs. Um, is it more concentrated in the leaf or the root? Personally, I don't know. So I, ca I can't say. But persons who are asthmatic might be able to tell you better, who grow it themselves, will, might be able to tell you better. But um, I just haven't done the research in that area. So I'll be speaking from a position of ignorance if I answer the question. But suffice it to say that the active ingredient is Delta 7 TH THC. And you do find it in both the leaf and the root. Um, where it is concentrated more, but I don't know. But I don't know you could either, one, you could draw it, um, or you could smoke it. And you do get, um, it does, it's a very good vasodilator and it um, reduces inflammation, right? So I just a little FYI. Um, and we do know if you, now they have legalized it to a certain extent, marijuana usage, but it's really good, it's very effective as a drug, right? In terms of marijuana, we get into that on another day. But the answer here, what immune cell is, is responsible for the quickest release of histamine? It's mast cells. So by extension, 
asthmatic attacks, the mast cells they release it, you know, causing this inflammation. Number three, what HIV attacks? attacks? Uh, yes, go ahead. So number two, won't have basophil be an answer as well? What is what immune cell is responsible for the quickest release of his? It does release it, but not as fast as the mast cell. Yes. So the best answer would be A. So if it put the D, you would get it wrong. Yeah. So while D is good, A is better. Number three, what HIV virus attacks, attaches to a whole cell when, sorry, HIV attaches to a whole cell, what genetic material is released into the cell cytoplasm? Uh -huh, that's a good one. Sorry, Nick. You sure? No, you're correct. I was just asking if yes, you're sir. sure. <laughs> yes, it is, right? It's a retrovirus uh, when you look at HIV. And what does a retrovirus mean? Anybody? When you say it's a retrovirus, what does it mean? And it has to do with your answer. You said um, RNA. Right, so this goes, we'll have to go back a little bit. A group of RNA viruses, mm -hmm. which insert a DNA copy of their genome into the host cell. So how does it- In order to replicate. Right, so it's an RNA virus. So how does it go from RNA to DNA? Hmm, that's interesting. Is it by mutation? Oh, that's a, that's a very good thought, you know, but no, it, no, it doesn't, it doesn't do it do it like that because so is what, it by mrna messenger RNA? not exactly right so so remember so we have um rna right but one of the things you have to appreciate generally in terms of something known as the central dogma usually you get rna from dna because you rightly say using messenger rna so when we're looking at how you copy something let's say from the nucleus of a cell Right, you have the DNA is tra is translated into a protein ultimately in the cytoplasm, but then you have transcription first to messenger RNA, and then the messenger RNA is translated into a protein in the cytoplasm. So you go from DNA to RNA to protein. But here it is now we starting at RNA, going to DNA, then coming back to uh, messenger RNA to convert it into a protein. And to do that, you need a very special enzyme called RT or reverse transcriptase because you're going, in the, you're going against what you normally do. Normally, you go from DNA to RNA and you don't go the other way around from RNA to DNA. So when you're looking at HIV, it injects the RNA into the cell, but first it now has to convert it into DNA. So it's going backward according to our knowledge of uh, how things work relating to DNA in a cell. So uh, one of the more interesting things, HIV has a, uh, an enzyme called reverse transcriptase RT, and it uses that to make what is known as cDNA. And now the cDNA is inserted into the genome of the cell. And now when the cell copies its genome, well, the genome of the virus is copied as well. And that's how the cell does it. It tricks the, um, sorry, how the virus does it. It tricks the cell into making its, its DNA for it. Because it, it just doesn't have the machinery to do it. And that's one of the more interesting things associated with viruses. So to answer your question, it doesn't mutate, but instead it uses an enzyme reverse transcriptase to convert it into DNA. The DNA is now inserted into the nucleus of the cell, incorporated into the host cell genome. And then when the cell is copying its, or convert, well, copying its DNA to ultimately make its protein, going through that whole process, well, the inserted DNA from the virus is copied as well. And now it's, it's uh, fragmented in the cytoplasm and it's reconstructed into a virus. And that's how the virus does it. Yeah, okay, let's go. Uh, number four, name the process. A cell such as a neutrophil or macrophage uses to ingest its spray. What is that big word? Cell oh, eating. Phagocytosis. phagocytosis, very good, yes? The phagocytosis. Next one. 
<laughs> I, I, I answer number five. In HIV, infection, reverse transcription describes which of the following. Who wants to answer that one for me? Converting the RNA to double stranded HIV DNA. What you're saying? Yes, yes. So, so there's something in biology called the central dogma. Right? You can look it up when you do every time. And the central dogma, what it refers to is that you need DNA first, and then DNA is transcribed into RNA and then translated into protein. So which is why if you're starting with RNA, you have to go back to DNA. And to do that, you use reverse transcriptase. As the name implies, reverse means going backwards. Transcribe means to write. So in other words, you're, you're writing the DNA message from RNA using this enzyme called RT. So the answer will be B, converting RNA into DNA. You have to convert it in order that you can now take that DNA and push it into the nucleus of the cell. Mm -hmm. And it's still all there. When the cell is copying its DNA, it copies it. So you get multiple copies, number one. And now they spread to other cells. And additionally, when certain parts of the DNA now is being transcribed, but into messenger RNA to be translated in the cytoplasm to produce a protein. Well, it, you know, it, it's there. So now it's copied and now you have the formation of these proteins. Proteins in the cytoplasm, you know, aggregated and booyah, you have a new virus. Let's go to the other one. Two more and then we call it a day. Which of these produces and secretes antibodies in the body? So which one secretes antibodies? Right? Well, we look at it in the summary, it's a plasma cell, right? So the plasma cell, these are the ones which secrete the antibodies themselves. And the last one, what is a specific term for a bacterial or protein that initiates antibody productions by the body? So- it's an antigen. Right, very good. So it's the antigen, antigen, all right? Let me- Right, well, there's the time, 9.30, we could do this, let me push forward. Which of these cell types can play a primary role in attacking and killing cancer cells? Huh. Is it in red blood cell? No, not the red blood. The major functions, that's a good um, guess. The major functions of the red blood cell um, is to really carry oxygen, you know, carry, carry oxygen uh, throughout the body itself, remove CO2 uh, as a major function. But instead, in terms of the killing, is the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, right? So the CTL, that would okay. be the answer. And these are really part of the white, red, white, um, white blood cells. Let me see this one, nine. What is an important mechanism white blood cells use to kill bacteria, fungi, and other invading pathogens? This will be our last one. Fixation. So how they do it, interestingly, is this one, mm, this one, you wouldn't get this, let's say, in a quiz or anything, because it's beyond the scope of the class. It's oxidative activity. Oxygen actually is quite, is quite a potent um, killer of bacteria. One of the reasons that it is able to do it, because you do have some bacteria that are anaerobic, right? They prefer, they, they can't live in an aerobic environment, which is why hydrogen peroxide is used to clean some wounds. Hydrogen peroxide, when it breaks down, produces um, water and oxygen. If you do use hydrogen peroxide, some of us might be familiar, you know, you get that frothing action. A nice way to see it as well, to liberate oxygen from hydrogen peroxide, is to take a piece of liver, raw liver, let's say chicken liver, chop it up, I say pour it, and pour hydrogen peroxide on it. You'll see immediately the hydrogen peroxide will start a bubble because liver has it, um, an enzyme, an oxidase that breaks down, uh, hydrogen peroxidase that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. 
That's one of the properties. Of so if you put on fresh wounds too, you would see it yeah, as well. Correct is right, right? Which just goes to show that there is an enzyme present there that could break it down. And one of the reasons you do it is to liberate the oxygen and the oxygen could kill off, high concentration of oxygen could kill off the anaerobic bacteria, those that cannot live. Some bacteria cannot live. Mm -mm, doesn't like oxygen at all. Similarly, like how we can't survive. Gone quiet. Yeah, sorry, I pushed the mute button. Thanks for letting me know. All right, so let's see. Um, so we did mention nine activity. What is the term applied to white blood cells? Squeezing squeezing between cells, lining the blood vessel to raise the site of an infection. And that is diapedesis, which is A, the innate mechanisms that mediate destruction of foreign substances in the body. What is that called? So the interferons. The interferons, innate mechanism that mediates destruction of foreign substances. Oh, well, so the complement. The complement, yeah, I was going to say that. Right. The complement. Yeah, the complement system. That's the one that mediates destruction by forming, you know, the holes in them and so on. Mediates immune responses in both T and B cells. That would be the helper T cells, right? That's what they do. Directional movement of cells in response to chemicals. We talked spoke about that. Which is the what is that called? Taxis is a movement, and in response to chemicals, which one it is? Thank you very much. Chemotaxis, yeah. 14, they are released by activated T and T cells and macrophages to mobilize immune. So these are the signal, everybody, signal. When you hear the word signal, what comes to mind? It's some small molecules, right? Like the crumbs, Hansel and Gretel. Cytokines, very good. Yeah, yeah. Right? So these are really the cytokines. Very good. 15. Excuse are, me, sir. Go ahead. My internet seems to be giving problems. And I'm okay. only coming back out. Okay. Well, I'm recording the session. So, yeah, understood. If you go, go back and forth, that's okay. Thanks for letting okay, me know. Then. Uh huh. Which of the following? releases histamines and of course that would be the mast cells and the basal cells the last of the lot 16 which are binds with mast cells this be on the scope of the class but i'll still mention it will be ige so you wouldn't have to know this this be on the scope of the class which of the following is an antigen presenting cell this is beyond the scope of these glass as well but it's natural killer cell where are b cells produced yeah that's a good one the name b stands for what no, no. Bone marrow. Bone marrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. And why it is bone marrow? Anybody? What's why special about the bone marrow? What that special type of cell you have in there? Hematopoietic something cell. Stem cells. Stem what, cells. It don't make sense. Excellent answer. Stem cells. Correct. Oh, That's what you find there. Here. Yes, I can see your future is so bright. You have to wear dark glasses. Very good. Uh, where are T cells produced now? Second to last question, the T cells. Thymus. 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 And the last one, these cells produce a protein antigen, break it into peptides and present it in conjunction. So they, I, I mentioned this one, right? So they mash it up and they hold it up, you know, and they walk around with it. What do you think they call them? So they present the-, the Antigen presenting cells. Thank you very much, antigen presenting cells. All right, so we'd stop there for today. Let me stop the recording. So it's two recordings today. Let's stop.